hundred says, Make a joyful shout to the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before His presence with singing. Touching every 
my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. Even though I walk through the valley of shadow of death, I shall fear no evil. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Shepherd of my soul, I give you full control. Wherever you may lead, I will fall. Nothing in this world can satisfy my desire for Him. Thank Nothing you, can Jesus. quench Thank this thirst. Nothing Father. can fill this you, hunger Jesus. except Thank for you, Jesus. Jesus. Thank you. 
lift your hands and praise the Lord. Praise the name of Jesus. Lift your hands. Lift your hands and lift the name of Jesus with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul. Let's just lift the name of Jesus. The name of Jesus is having power over every other name. The name of Jesus is having power over every sickness, every virus. The name of Jesus is having power over every sin. Yes, Jesus. Yes, Jesus. Yes, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. We lift your name on high. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I'm trading my sickness. I'm trading my pain.
Oh, oh, oh. 
the mystery See the empty cross See the risen Savior Victorious and strong That's right Go and answer about Him Not too strong to say He alone has conquered Power of the great glorious. I have seen the glory of the Lord. Glorious, oh yes, Lord. Above the rulers of the earth. Glorious. Ruler of my heart, that's right. No one else above him, not to match his words. Hope of us is turning, fills the universe. Glorious, amen. My eyes have seen the glory of the Lord Glorious Oh glory Support the rulers of the earth Glorious Glorious Lord you are Glorious Their own soul 
Lift up the light, lift up the light to the giver of light. Lift up the light, lift up the light to the giver of light. You alone can rescue, you alone can save, you alone can lift death from the grave. You came down to find us, let us out of death. Along the lost, the high just praise. You along the lost, the high just praise. You along the lost, the high just praise. You along the lost, the high just praise. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! We praise your name. We praise your name, Jesus. Oh, we give you glory, Lord. We praise your name. We worship you, Jesus. Oh, we worship you, Jesus. Oh, we worship you, Jesus. Oh, we worship you, Lord. We praise your name. We praise your name. Oh, we worship you, Jesus. You deserve the glory and the honor. We lift our hands in worship and we lift your holy name. You deserve the glory and the honor. Lord, we lift our hands in worship and we lift your holy name. You are great, you do miracles so great. There is no one else like you. There is no one else like you. You are great. You do miracles so great. There is no one else like you. There is no one else like you. Hallelujah. I know many of them are here. Hallelujah. Who are expecting hallelujah and miracle in their lives. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The word of God says in Hebrews 11, without faith it's impossible to please God. Hallelujah. You have the faith. You have the faith that Jesus is here in our midst. Hallelujah. You are great. You do miracles so great. There is no one else like There is no one else like you. You are great. You do miracles so great. There is no one else like you. There is no one else like you. You deserve the glory and the honor. Lord, we lift our hands. And you lift your holy name, you deserve the glory and the honor. Lord, we lift our hands to worship and you lift your holy name. You are great, you are so great. There is no one else like you. There is no one else like you. You are great. You do miracles so great. There is no one else like you. 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 Once again, there is no one else like you. Oh, we worship your name, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
we praise your name lord jesus hallelujah kadandalasya andasya ramandala lagadalasya oh yes lord hallelujah oh jesus you are great you do miracles so great in our lives father hallelujah each day that we go forward lord we want your miracle lord in our lives father jesus you are the name above all other names hallelujah you are the beautiful savior you are the risen one hallelujah Jesus, name above all names, beautiful Savior, glorious Lord, oh, Emmanuel, God is with us. Blessed Redeemer, Redeemer, Hallelujah, Jesus, name above all. Together unto him. We are singing. 
Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We worship your name. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. Once again, from all your hearts. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. To see you high and lifted up. Shining in the light of your glory. Pour out your power and love. As we sing holy, holy, holy To see you high and lifted up Shining in the light of your glory Pour out your power and love We sing holy, holy, holy I want to see you I want to see you 
Lift your hearts to him as you sing along together. In your presence, O oh Lord. In your presence, that's where I am strong. In your presence, O oh Lord my God. In your presence, that's where I belong. Seeking your faith, touching your grace. In the cleft of the rock, in your presence, O oh God, I want to be. I want to hide where the flood of evil cannot touch me. Where I'm covered by your blood, Jesus, by your blood. I want to be where the schemes of darkness cannot touch me. In your presence, O oh God, in your presence, that's where I am strong. In your presence. O oh Lord, my God, in your presence, that's where I belong, seeking your faith, touching your grace, in the cleft of the Thank you, Jesus, Lord. Thank Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. You are my hiding place, Lord. You, you are my hiding place, Jesus. Lift your hearts to Him. Tonight, worship Him. Say, Jesus, you are my hiding place. Psalms 32, 7 and 8 says, The Lord is our hiding place. He always fills our heart with songs of deliverance. Let Him fill your heart with songs of deliverance tonight. Let His presence envelop you tonight. There is no better place than the presence of Jesus. And we come into it with worship. Let 
the weak say I am strong in the strength of my Lord. Jesus, Jesus tonight we thank you that we are safe and secure in your presence. Tonight as a church, as a family, wherever we are, we come before you. And Jesus, we acknowledge your Lordship upon yes, our Lord. lives. Amen. We acknowledge Jesus, you alone can preserve, you alone yes, can protect, yes. you alone can defend, yes, you alone can keep our lives. Amen. Into your hands we come at our lives tonight. Jesus, we acknowledge your Lordship. Yes, Lord. We acknowledge your Lordship. We enforce your victory. Yeah. Let your presence be manifested, O oh God. Yes, we give you all glory and honor. Yes, we magnify your name tonight. Yes, we magnify your name tonight. Yes, we glorify your name tonight. Yes, Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. It's nice to be with you once again another Friday with God's word. Amen. Hope you have your Bibles, a piece of paper and pen with you because we want to look at something very simple but something very profound and we're going to look into God's word. So I want you to take your pen, your paper, I want you to pray in the spirit and I want you to get into God's word with me. Amen. We're going to study together. We are in this together. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Tonight I want to preach to you a word. Um, the secret place. Preserved in the secret place. Amen. And I want to open up a scripture, Psalms 91. Verses 1, 2, 3 and 4. We know that Psalm, but Psalms 91, the first verse we read it now. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. The third verse, Surely He shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover thee with His feathers and under His wings thou shalt trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Amen. Underline Psalm 91 1 if, if it is not underlined till now. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Underline that and say, preserved in the secret place of God. Preserved in the secret place of God. Amen. It is not enough for us to be used of God, but to understand how and when God wants to use us. God, God looks for people with flexibility, with sensitivity. People who have been in the secret place with God. Psalm 139 says, we know that, that Psalm is symbolic of God being everywhere. So it is naturally not possible to hide from God. God is omnipresent. But this, that does not mean that you can meet with Him anywhere. Location and atmosphere matters. Every place is not conducive for a meeting with the Almighty God. We know that the whale is stone. When Jesus died on the cross and God's presence came down. Theologically. But have you seen people who walk in, walk and when they minister for something happens. When they speak a few words, it touches your heart. It's almost as if the Lord is speaking to you. It is when certain people minister for you can feel the supernatural. The presence of God is manifested. Something happens. Miracles begin to take place. It's almost as if electric shock goes through you. 
when certain men of God minister. That's because those men of God know how to be in that secret place. God has got a place. And I mean, just imagine, some time back, you know, uh, the president of America came down to India and the, the prime minister of India, they had a meeting. And that was not in a street corner. The meeting place was arranged. There was an ambience, an atmosphere of the North Korean leader. And the president of America met. It was shown on all over the world, TV channels. The place was important. Just because God love, God is love and God is everywhere doesn't mean that you don't need to value the atmosphere and the presence. You know, when, when, when certain people come into your home, certain people you would keep them by the gate. Not because they are not valued, but somehow they haven't earned the right to have access to your home. Some people can come into your living room or your drawing room. Some people can come into the kitchen. And only certain people can go into that place of a bedroom. People that you trust. People that you intimate with. And it is the same way with the Lord. God is everywhere. Even business meetings don't happen just depending on the quality of the meeting. It doesn't happen in some chai shop, you know. There's, there's, there's an atmosphere, place. Everything that is noble and everything that is godly is always hidden. Sometimes, the, sometimes people not understand the concept of God hiding himself. God is love and God is everywhere. Pastor, what are you saying? I mean, a, a God who loves you and me, how can he hide? Some people say, God will not hide. Anywhere. Some people say, you need, you have the Bible, that's all you need. The whale was stoned 2,000 years ago when Jesus died on the cross. That's all that you need. What I have learned from scripture, everything glorious is hidden. And it is your pursuit that reveals it. You buy an expensive phone or something expensive. It is just not kept in the open. It is hidden in a box. Because of the value that is placed on that object. God is valuable. In redemption, Jesus came down for us. But God wants to be pursued. God is wanting to see who wants to be intimate with him. And he hides himself to see whether you will follow after him, seek him. Just imagine if your heart was on your head. All your enemies would have just boom, destroyed it. It is a very important thing, your heart, right? See, it is hidden. What happens if a woman was getting pregnant and the baby was on the head? Now the baby is hidden. And the baby is revealed at the right time. Certain products that you buy from a shop, they say if the container is open, give it back. Some people think the secret place is the house of God. The house of God is beautiful. I love it. Can you, are you excited? Are you waiting for the day when you can get back to with other believers to worship the Lord corporately? If you are, lift your hands and say, Amen. Lord, we are waiting for that. But look at that scripture. Psalms 91. It says there, He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High, not them, not corporate. He 
it's it's personal it's not a physical location sometimes it can be but it is a spiritual state a posture that god wants you to have and if you are wanting to learn say amen amen where you know you have access to god and you have found your stream it's a personal thing sometimes people think okay they pray prayer is important fellowship is important fasting is important all that is good all that is nice but that's not what i'm speaking about all that god tells you in a secret place is not for everybody else it's intimate there are things which the lord has spoken to me which have never ever opened my mouth and said because it is between me and the lord men and women of god and just not men and women of god but men and women are made in the secret place it's a it's a location spiritually open your mouth and say it's a location it's a location spiritually spiritually amen amen it's a, it's, a, it's a location spiritually a place where wow it's a posture it's a spiritual posture and i want to i want to speak about that and that's the six dimensions of it of access into the secret place and number 1 secret place is the place of brokenness say that with me secret place secret place is the place of is the place brokenness of brokenness Psalms 51 a broken and contrite heart of God that you will not despise Sometimes as believers we think brokenness is only needed for the unbeliever for the sinner But that's not the way it is God what doesn't want you to be so full of yourself so full of pride arrogance that he's got no access to you or in other words you got no access to him i have seen certain men come forth and they just stand and just pick up the mic and say a few words people are crying something happens because they come from a place of brokenness they are broken towards god they are broken before god it's through their prayed they fasted they know the bible from cover to cover they have read it a hundred times maybe but that doesn't fill them with pride it's true that god has used them those things matter to them what matters is the access that they have with god and that meeting point with god where they're broken before him and when they say jesus almost tears are falling down heart is broken and while they worship there is a sweetness to it it is personal you're crying you're experiencing the love of god you you know you can sense the presence of god there is a generation that hates to be broken before god i've looked at men of god whom god mightily uses and i'm just not speaking about a title i'm speaking about genuine men and women of god whom god is using and i thought how can god use that person i know him I know his strengths, I know his weakness, I know which family he comes from, where he comes from, what his qualifications are, what his character is, what his nature is. I know him. 
Yeah, you know him in the natural. But God knows him deeper than you know him. And God has found something in that person. But God has got access into that person. And he reveals the word. He reveals the mysteries. He speaks to the heart. The sin of pride sometimes hardens man's heart. And that destroys them. Many men and women of God have been destroyed by just pride. I saw a man of God once minister forth and he was, you know, I mean, I thought, ah, I, how can God use him? He's so full of himself, so full of pride. He almost looked like an arrogant man. Insensitive guy. And I was judging him like that. And then I went and prayed. And the Spirit of God told me, Son, I have seen him humble before me. I have seen him broken before me. A broken man will rise up in the presence of God and nobody can stop him. It is a posture that brings in the presence of God. Sometimes you look at certain people and say, Lord, why are you using him? I'm fasting more than that person. I have a better character than that person. I know the Bible more than that person. I've been more educated than that person. Why are you using him? He's broken. Pride kills. A place of arrogance in your heart. If you have, God leaves you. His presence leaves you. person who's projecting himself and taking glory for himself God's presence lives him he doesn't even realize it don't be carried away by the applause of people brokenness allows you to hear from the throne room of God It is true that you might not be broken, you might be reading your Bible, studying the Bible, praying and all that, and you haven't backslid into the major sins. That is true, but you have not grown either. You have not grown either. Acts 13, 20, to look at David. Psalms 51 was also David. Acts 13, 22, we know the scripture. David was a man after God's own heart. Say that with me. David was a man. David was a man. After God's own heart. After God's own heart. He was not after God's fame. Not after God's money. Not even after God's anointing. He was after the very heart of God. There are many who are after God's fame. God's money and God's anointing. But David was a man after God's own heart. He said, Lord, take everything away, but take not your presence from me. Take not your presence from me. I want to have access with you at all times. I want to be in your presence. It's not that I want to be the king and I want to rule for the rest of my life. It's not that I want to be the apostle and the pastor and the teacher and the worship leader and all in all for the rest of my life. No, no. If you want me to do that, I'll do all that. But that's not what is important for me. What is important for me is, Lord, your presence. Take away the throne. Take away the palace. Take away the kingdom. Take away everything. But take not your presence from me. Lift your hand and say, Jesus, take not your presence away from me. Amen. Amen. The secret place is a place of mercy. Where you find the mercy of God. 
as a major key say that me a place of mercy place of mercy sometimes the idea of mercy we think is for sinner you look at mercy is it hey i was saved 20 years back yeah psalms 86 was five psalms 86 was five open your scriptures to that psalms 86 and verse five for you lord are, for you lord are good are good and ready to forgive and ready to forgive and abundant in mercy and abundant or plenteous in mercy to all those who call upon you to all those that call upon you lord you are plenteous in mercy to all those who call upon you or come to you whoever abides in the shadow of the almighty it's not coming in but it's actually abiding in it's it's abiding in the mercy of god it's got nothing to do with you it's got to do with what jesus did on the cross 2000 years ago it's not about your intelligence and your education and what you have it's about the mercy not your plenteous and mercy have have been amazed at people sometimes whom god has blessed and then hey that man doesn't doesn't deserve that hey he doesn't deserve that i mean it goes beyond a man's faith level god is saying i'm going to be good to him because of my mercy because he's counting on my mercy he's not coming there so full of himself and saying yeah he's saying lord i'm not worthy for any of this blessing i'm not worthy that i have breath inside of me even now that i'm alive but you've given me life all that i have is because of your mercy i don't deserve it lord i haven't earned it lord you, you you've just been good to me and your plenteous in mercy but people honor you people love you lord it's because you have been merciful to me Lamentations chapter 3 was 22 Lamentations chapter 3 was 22 Yes Because of his mercies we are not consumed say that Through the Lord's mercies say that with me through the Lord's mercies through the Lord's mercies We are not consumed. We are not consumed. Say that again. Through the Lord's mercies. Through the Lord's mercies. We are not consumed. We are not consumed. Amen. You got to learn to provoke the mercy of God. Once a man of God said he had a problem and he asked God to give him victory in one particular area of his life. because he kept falling into the same thing again and again so he said lord i want to give me victory i want you to give me victory and the lord told him son you will have victory when you are 97 years old <laughs> till then what you will have is my mercy till then what you will have is my mercy you won't be consumed but learn to provoke my mercy learn to come before my mercy lamentation 322 read on through the lord's mercy through the lord's word mercy we are not consumed we are not consumed because his compassions fail not because his compassion fail not fail not they are new every morning see the compassion that word means the ability to be touched by 
the feeling of your infirmities or limitations he feels your struggle because of his compassion read on that word fail not his compassion does not fail sometimes we expect results you know when you you know when you get discouraged you said i prayed i fasted i've read the bible cover to cover 30 times 40 times 50 times i do not know how many and he said okay i've done this i've helped the poor i've tithed i've given my offerings i've done everything and so you're saying i want promotion i want favor i want blessing i want you to do this for me lord you wanting results because of what you've done or because of your experience lord i came to you 20 years ago i've suffered much for you so you lord i'm discouraged but you didn't act for me you didn't do this for me you are proud psalms 25 verse 6 Psalms 25 verse 6 Psalms, Remember O Lord Remember O Lord your tender mercies your tender mercies and your loving kindness and your loving kindness for they are from of old from for they are from of old Amen next verse Do not remember the sins of my youth. Do not remember the sins of my youth. No my transgressions. No my transgressions. According to your mercy. According to your mercy. Remember me. Remember me. For your goodness sake. For your Lord. goodness sake, O Lord. Amen. See the sins the psalmist has done is this youth is following him. And he's saying, Lord, the sins, the mistakes that I've done in my youth, let not follow me. Your mercy follow me Lord according to your mercy You got to learn to provoke God's mercy the blind Bartimaeus in the new covenant in the new testament he said when he heard that Jesus was going that way that was the last time that Jesus went through that town before his crucifixion He cried out He didn't sit there and cry Lord I've been obedient all through my life I've never done anything wrong. I'm better than those preachers and from all those religious people, Lord. I can't even see. He didn't say that. He provoked the mercy of God. He, Jesus, Son of David, have mercy on me. See God. Here's your heart not your mouth Have you seen people who with their mouth speak stupid things negative things but their heart is not like that I mean they just haven't learned self control they just open their mouth and their negative confessions negative words but in their hearts they are really crying before God and God looks into the heart And that's why God didn't judge that person. So as people speak bad about servants of God, about church, ministry and all that, but in their hearts they're really wanting the Lord. And God is merciful. And other way around too. I've seen people in church sometimes say the right words but the heart is not there you know i you know i was fasting once and i was fasting and i was the lord asked me to fast so i was fasting and i was spending time in his presence and after some time you know i just began to check my on my ipad and just began to go through all the food blogs every restaurant every food the juicy hamburger the shakes everything so i realize okay 
I am fasting. I'm doing the right thing outwardly, but my heart is not quite there. <laughs> my heart is like, I want, I want to eat. I want to eat. I want to grab a burger. I want to just eat something. Sometimes people come and have this finest prayers. They say, I praise you, Lord. I thank you, Lord. But their hearts are like, why did you do this to me, Lord? Sometimes in the mouth they are like, Lord, bless me. But in their hearts they are on a revenge mission. And they don't see the blessing coming. You know why? The heart and the mouth are not together. God looks into the heart. Lift your hearts before him. Say, Jesus, my heart belongs to you. My heart belongs to you. Jesus said, These people worship me in vain. Their hearts are far from me. They worship me with their mouth, but their hearts are far from me. Mercy looks at your heart. Psalms 32, when David, when the psalmist is saying, When I said I will confess to the Lord my sin. He forgave my iniquity. He didn't confess. When I thought of confessing, that's what Psalms 32 says. He forgot, he forgave the guilt of my sin. Can you imagine that? He didn't even confess. Before he could confess, when his heart was kind of, ah, Lord, I'm just so, so sorry. God just forgave. Amen. It's a secret place. It is, see, that's what is it. When God has access to you, where you have access to God, it is not a church building or your prayer room or it's your posture the posture of your heart third thing secret place is a place of rest and comfort I want you to say that with me the secret place the secret place is a place is a place of rest and comfort of rest and comfort amen 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 write this down never forget it everyone you know has the potential to disappoint you. Everyone you know. Everyone you know, whether it be your wife, your husband, your children, your parents, your brothers, your sisters, your relatives, your neighbors, your friends, your pastor, your church member, have the potential to hurt you, disappoint you. Whether it be in your business, whether it be in your ministry, whether it be in your marriage, everyone. I remember you know, some time back, somebody messaged me saying, Pastor, I was so discouraged because I thought you would help me. I was looking up to you. I thought you would help me. So when you get discouraged, you get weary, you get tired, but you got to learn to find your rest and comfort in Christ, in God. You got to learn to find that place. That's why the Bible says David encouraged himself in the Lord. You know, more than men, women have the obsession to share their life pain. So whoever you can find who will listen, you share everything with them. And that often gets you into trouble. It's because you have never learned to take it before the Lord in prayer. I remember years back, I went and shared something with somebody. And that, I thought, oh my God, why did I share that with that person?
Sometimes people are sitting in a coffee shop and they're sharing their business ideas so loudly that the guy sitting on the next table is taking notes. And he goes and does it. <laughs> and they say, oh my God. It's happened to me. Many a time, you know, I've shared some of the things that God's put that's going to happen for the kingdom of God. And other men of God, and I'm only happy that they did even before I could do it, they just went and did it. Don't allow your mouth to destroy your destiny. Pastors learn to take their pain, their hurt, their wounds, their tiredness, discouragement before God. It is said that on an average, 300 pastors quit every day around the world so not every day every year around the world 300 other just discouraged because people cannot understand people cannot understand your pain only God can People cannot understand your need. You might be actually struggling for just hundred bucks. And your closest friend might be just tipping off somebody there with the two thousand buck. And you think, oh my God, if I had at least hundred of that. Because people don't understand. But God knows you have bills to pay. God knows you have needs in your life. God knows your age. God knows your dream. God knows that you're falling short of the goal that you set for your life. And He cares about you. But you need to access into His presence and say, Lord, I need rest. I am weary. I am tired. I am hurt. I am disappointed. I lay it at your feet. Restore my soul. And the Lord will help you with that. But if you just keep looking around, you are not made. God cannot make you who you are supposed to be. Psalms 91 verses 4 and 5. Look at that. Psalms 91 verses 4 and 5. Under shall take refuge. His truth shall be your shield and buckler. See, he shall cover you with his feathers it's almost like a mother hen covering her chicks the Lord says, I'll cover you just come to me Psalm 62 verses 1 to 5 Psalm 62 verses 1 to 5 truly my soul silently waits for God truly my soul silently waits for God from him comes my salvation from him comes my salvation he only is my rock. He only is my rock. And my salvation. And my salvation. He is my defense. He is my defense. I shall not be greatly I moved. I shall not be greatly moved. How long will you attack a man? How long will you attack a man? You shall be slain, all of you. You shall be slain, all of you. Like a leaning wall. Like a, a leaning wall. And a tottering fence. And a tottering fence. They only consult to cast him down. They only consult to cast him down. From his high position. From his high position. They delight in lies. They delight in lies. They bless with their mouth. They bless with their mouth. But they curse inwardly. But they curse inwardly. The fifth verse. My soul waits silently for God alone. My soul waits silently for God and for God alone. My expectation is from Him. God knows you're fragile. You need to be covered. When somebody came and asked me, Pastor, how do you keep yourself motivated? You see him always seems happy. I have something what a man of God told me long time back. He said, success is a burden. Success is a burden. And he was a successful man. I am not. He said, success is a burden. There are people who want to make you feel bad. Somebody said, you know, she runs a travel agency. 
Really? I never knew that she runs a travel agency. Yeah, yeah, she is always sending people on guilt trips. <laughs> Somebody sending you on a guilt trip? So the people expect leaders to have answers for everything. At Red Sea, people who wanted to kill Moses. There are people who are clever, who misunderstand. There are people who really outwardly, Hi, Pastor! But inwardly, how can we finish him off? That's what the Psalm 62 says. When will he meet with an accident? Oh, I hope something really bad happens to him. But you learn to wait on God. Lift your hand and say, wait on Jesus. Wait on your Jesus. salvation comes from the Lord. Salvation. He will deliver you, save you, help you. Lift your hands and praise His name for some time. Lift up the name of Jesus. 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 Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Glory be to the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. The fourth one, we're going through this fast now. A secret place is a place of revival and restoration. Psalm 143, verse 11. Psalms 23, 2 and Psalms 143, 11. Psalm 23, 2, we know that scripture. The Lord restores my soul. Psalm 143, 11. Let's read that. Psalm 143, 11. Revive me, O Lord. Revive me, O Lord. For your name's sake. For your name's sake. For your righteousness' sake. For your righteousness' sake. Bring my soul out of trouble. Bring my soul out of trouble. Quicken me or revive me. Revive me. Revive me, Lord. Bring my soul out of trouble. Got burdens I'm carrying, expectations that I'm carrying. A place where you cry, Lord, revive me. In Revelations 2, the Bible says to the Ephesians church, Ephesus church, one thing I have against you, you have, you have lost your first love. First love. They, they are not stopped loving God. They love God. It's just that not the way they used to love before. None of us have stopped loving Jesus. You wouldn't be sitting in front of this message hearing it if you stopped loving Jesus. You love Jesus. That's why you're here. But remember your first love. When you would get up in the night and be on your knees and cry and sing to Jesus and read the Bible on your knees. That's the secret place. God is restoring somebody to that place. You've got trouble everywhere. Your children are not, not listening to you. you have, your, your, your bills are not paid. You've got financial struggles. You've got health issues. You, you're confused about a lot of things. But the Lord says, he will, if, you, if you will come before a secret place and say, Lord, revive me. I want to come back to that first love. Revive me, Lord. Revive me, Lord. The Lord says, Amen. The Lord will deliver you. He will bring you out of trouble. He will quicken you. He will bring you to that place of revival, of restoration. Lift you in and say, receive it in the name of Jesus. Name of Amen. Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The fifth one, the secret place is a place of illumination. The secret of your destiny is not found in a book. Read a book. Read the Bible, all that. But, but it has to be God revealing to you. What somebody else does might not be exactly what God wants you to do.
that person had an illumination from God's word. You didn't have, you didn't have anything. And you're just copying that other person. See, your destiny, a blueprint of what God wants with your life on planet earth. He illuminates you. That, that's, the, that's the second place. I mean, you can read a hundred books. You can go for every conference. Be friends with every pastors. Listen to every message that is there on the net. But unless you find the secret place where you know God illuminates you. He reveals to you. And you know. You know what, what, what's what God wanting to work through you. Daniel chapter 2. That's an amazing word. Daniel chapter 2, verses 14. I want from the King James, please. Daniel chapter 2, verses 14 to 22, and verses 28. Daniel chapter 2, 14 to 22, and verse 28. Yes. Then with counsel and wisdom. Mm, then Dan with counsel and wisdom. Daniel answered Arioch, mm. the captain of the king's guard, oh. who had gone out to kill the wise men of Babylon. He answered and said to Arioch, the king's captain, Why is the decree from the king so urgent? Then Arioch made the decision known to Daniel. So Daniel went in and asked the king to give him time. So give me time. Open your mouth and say, give me time. Give me time. I will prove. Lord, I mean, the king had a, a dream and he wanted the interpretation of it. Then I said, I'll give it to you. Listen, I can give it to you. God will illuminate me. I'm one of a child. I'm a child of God. I know my destiny. I know what God has called me for. Just, just give me time. I can get this business right. God asked me to do this business. It's not, it's not functioning the way that I, it should function. It's not bringing me the rewards. It should be bringing me. But don't judge me, please. Don't count me as a failure. Just give me time. This will come up. You know, God told me to get married. I got married. Hey, listen. Marriage might not be working the way that it's supposed to work. Or you, the way you expect it to work. But just give me time. This will come out just fine. Hey, my kids might be a little naughty and upset and just give me some time. I know the prophetic word over their lives, what they will become. Just give me some time. God will illuminate me. God will reveal what I have to do. God will fill me with his wisdom. God will give me his knowledge. Just, just be patient with me. I know where the church is supposed to go. I know what we are supposed to do. I know we're supposed to enter the next phase. I know we got the nations way. I mean, God is waiting to move us into the nations. I know God is going to broaden the, uh, our boundary walls. I mean, uh, why is nothing happening? But just wait, just be patient with me. Hallelujah. I know God will do it. God has illuminated me. He will do it. Just be patient with me. Give me time. Don't make a conclusion about my life. Don't put a full stop on what my life and God is not. Yeah, I might be emotionally messed up right now, but oh my God, suicidal and challenged and hysterical. But I know I have a calling from God and God wants to bring out something through my life. Just give me time. The Lord is speaking to somebody tonight. He is speaking. He is giving you time. He is giving you time to illuminate you. Wow. He, you are here listening to this message because He's giving you time. Hallelujah. He is patient with you. Do not be afraid. Hallelujah. He will illuminate you. He will bring through. He will reveal the mysteries. He will untangle the mess. He will reveal what's going to happen into the future. He will reveal the path forward. Do not be upset. Hallelujah. Every door seems closed. People are judging you. Are locked up inside that room and thinking what's going to happen with me listen hallelujah God is not finished with you there is something he will do with you and through you hallelujah blessed be the name of Jesus lift your head and say I have time 
Look at the 17th verse. Daniel 2:17. Then Daniel went to his house and made the decision known to Hananiah, Mishael and Azariah, mm. his companions. 18. That they might seek mercies from the from the God of heaven concerning the secret. Concerning the secret. See? Uh, look at the 19th verse. 19. Then the secret was revealed Then to the secret was revealed to Daniel in the night vision. Somebody is going to experience that kind of anointing. Secret mysteries are going to be revealed to you. Uh, you're going to have access with God. Uh, God is going to reveal to you. Uh, blessed be the name of Jesus. Somebody asked the other day, Pastor, so many prophets, so many pastors, all that, and why didn't anybody speak about COVID-19? Give me time. I'm just kidding. Let me tell you, God will reveal it. God revealed to Joseph that he was going to be the prime minister but God didn't reveal the pit and the prison. God will. God has given prophetic words about fruitfulness. God will bring it to pass. COVID-19 lockdown or not it doesn't matter. God gave that word. Receive it, take it, hold on to it. He will bring in fruitfulness over your life. Amen. God reveals to you, illuminates you what works for your life. What's the secret of favor? And the last one, and I close with this. Are you enjoying the word tonight? Psalm so Isaiah 64 verse 1 Isaiah 64 verse 1 Come down that the mountains might shake at your presence Oh that you would rend the heavens and that you might come down that the mountains might shake at your presence Rend means to tear Mark chapter 1 9 10 11 and 12th verse Matthew chapter 3 verse 16 you will find the heavens were opened and a voice came from heaven saying this is my beloved son with whom I am well pleased heavens were opened rent or oh, that you would rent the heavens and come down that word is uh uh skizo s s s s c h i z o s skizo c h i z o what is it skizo free skizo 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 that's skizo it's from that word schizophrenia which means split personalities Schizo means split. Tarot split. Schizophrenia split personality. I believe that God is going to rend the heavens and do something amazing. A schizo moment that's a Greek word. Schizo to split a thing. To you Now the in physics people use that an atom can be split into smaller particles the word uses schizo and whatever there's a word out to do it schizo genesis but even in nature they have a system where certain things are split a, a, a split second there is a moment in your life open heaven where solomon had almost 95% heaven open over him all the time so there was no wars no bloodshed one meal of solomon what he had on the table could feed hundreds of families for a whole year one meal
God opens up something over your life supernaturally that it continues for generations. A schizo moment. In a split second, you open something. A moment. Life before that is different, but that, that, that moment changes you all together. That, that's the secret place. Where you, a moment with God changes everything. I was listening to a man who got a, a virus, I think it was TB. And um, he got it in his travels, a very, very uh, strong one, what do you say, a very tough, what do you know, huh? a virulent one. And he had to, in a stubborn one, that's the easier word, a stubborn virus. And you know, and they had to treat him, and so they said six months every day he has to come and take an injection uh, on his Barnes and Nobles, you know. <laughs> every day he's got to get an injection for six months, and he's a lot. Six months every day. But he says he went in for a worship. And a moment in that worship. In a split second. His entire body was completely rid of that virus. Supernaturally because... God came down and intervened. May that be your portion. Some of you sitting with, with, with stubborn issues. Praise God. A secret place. A split second moment. A shikso moment where God comes down and heals you of the stubborn bondage once forever in the name of Jesus. Blessed be the name of Jesus. Amen. Just one moment. One moment. You know, God is everywhere, but like I said, that's a secret place. In the old covenant, God actually was hiding or kept his presence, was hidden. What is glorious is veiled behind the veil in the Holy of Holies. Can you imagine that? A curtain, maybe as thick as this, a little more. <laughs> the glory of was just behind. And nobody had access to it. The Shekinah presence of God was there. And just outside the Holy of Holies, just was the altar of incense. Where the high priest would come and after having walked through the outer court and sacrificed for the sin and all that carrying the blood, he would come in through. He would come just outside the curtain. The Holy of Holies. Just outside that offer up the incense, the smoke of worship would rise and he had through the blood access in the old covenant into the holy of holies into the presence of God so there is a moment there is a secret place moment I mean not everybody's hallelujah is the same Everybody's saying hallelujah, but not everybody's just the same. For some, it's a, it's a moment. It's, it's amidst their tears. And somebody just got a card and they say, hallelujah, thank you Lord for this. That's great, thank you. But somebody else just lost their child and they're crying and they're saying, Lord, you gave it. You, you, you gave me and you took it away. Hallelujah, through those tears. It's not the 
the same. It's never the same. What I'm trying to tell you is a secret place. The access to God is through worship. Look at one scripture, Exodus chapter 30 verse 34. Exodus chapter 30 verse 34. Exodus chapter 30 verse 34. And the Lord said to Moses, And God said to Moses, Take sweet spices. See, the, 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 all, to make the incense, the anointing of incense. Take sweet spices. Stacked. Stacked. And onika. Onika. And galbanum. Mm, and galbanum. And pure frankincense. Mm. With these sweet spices. See, four things. And with salt. You can look, look through the scripture later. Galbanum is, comes actually from India. It's an, it's a, it's an aloeish uh, brown resin or gum which has got a very not so good smell. It's not, it's not, it doesn't have an attractive smell. Then there is this Onicha? Onika. 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 That's how you pronounce it. Okay. Onika. It actually is a you have to dive into actually the Nile, the Red Sea. That's the only place where you find it. And you take it out from a, it's a shellfish. You catch that shellfish, you take it, you bring up, you shave the inside of it, and you put it into the fire, and that's how the smell comes out. And that's the base. There are moments in your worship, the only thing sweet is the, the, the frankincense. Even, the, even uh, everything else in that is not that kind of sweet. But everything blended together is what made the worship. Just like, you know, you buy perfume. For a long time I used a perfume called jupe. It had a nice smell. But they have a certain measurement making it. You have uh, different kind of, you know, okay, you have... Uh, Dolls and Gabbana, you have uh, Brute, you have uh, different ones. And some of you are kind of old fashioned, you still use the old spice. But each one, <laughs> each one has got a measurement, there's a way that you make it. That's what brings in that fragrance. So here is the, the, the ingredients for worship. And different ingredients come together. Some has to be in your Red Sea experience. You have to dive deep. You have to go down and you take it. It doesn't smell too good. You don't know why this is happening to you. And you shaved and put in the fire. And you don't know what's happening. By itself, it might have a terrible smell. But the frankincense is also coming. The galabenum is also coming. The, the stack is also coming. And all together. Amen. It produces the worship before God that brings in that chikso moment. Split second moment. But God steps in and reveals himself to you. Lift your hand and so let that be my portion, Lord. Let that be my portion. Amen. 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 Glory. I mean, I mean, this, this incense has to be smoke. The smoke has to rise up. Your prayer, your worship has to rise up. Smoke has to rise up. Smoke has to go up. It's okay to smoke in church, you know. <laughs> smoke has to rise up. <laughs> All these ingredients together, you have to, the smoke has to come out. Some, some of your smoke is not coming out. It's okay to get high in church and worship. Your smoke has to come out. It's to go up. And. God smelled the sacrifice of Noah when he came out. And God actually looks at the fragrance. Hmm. So God looks at your worship and says, Wow, all this has come together. Your tears, your low moments, your hard moments, your tough moments, your painful moments, all that has come forth as a worship and it's rising up and boom, one moment, one moment.
Look at your neighbor and say, smoke in church. <laughs> smoke of worship. Huh? Some of you just came in for the message and you say, oh wow, what a cool church. I can actually smoke in church. <laughs> That's not what I meant. <laughs> this pastor actually wants me to smoke in church. Oh my God. Yeah, your incense, worship. moment of your lifetime in the secret place don't get frustrated when something is not happening a moment a split second you know, once a man of God I heard the testimony of somebody who used to eat chicken outside a, a restaurant they would throw the waste into a bin and the the bones and the pieces that is there, he would go and eat it. He was that hungry. He was in the street. He would eat it and go to sleep. And one day he prayed, if there is a God who can actually give me a full piece chicken and a bread, I'll put my faith in him. I'll give him my life. And to his surprise, the next person who came out of the restaurant actually looked at him and said, would you like to have this piece of chicken in this? Something like a KFC, you know, some like a place. Would you like to have it? And that kind of stirred up that moment of faith. So he went to a nearby church and there was a meeting going on. He committed his life to the Lord. Dirty man from the street coming in, gave altar call, he gave his life to Jesus. And then made him think, if God can give me a chicken and bread when I asked him, how much more can God do for me? That man is one of the richest men now. In a particular country, he's got he's he's got all the uh, what do you say, the mm, telephone companies. He owns all the telephone companies in that particular nation. He's got his own private jet, everything. A strong believer. But it was that moment of realization that God can. Brownsville revival. Intercession, prayer, worship was going on for years. Nothing happened. But they were consistent. They just kept doing it. But one day, John Kilpatrick says, when he stood before the pulpit, as about to preach, he heard a sound and the glory just fell. A split second. The revival that happened in that place, some of them to end there for a service had to stand in the queue for three and a half days. And that's how people who see and the Browns will revival for a meeting. May God do that something like that in our church. Amen. We've been praying, we've been fasting, we've been seeking here. Yeah, but there is a moment, there is a moment, there is a moment, there is a moment. second where everything changes some of you you know it comes in the secret place in the moment I was uh, listening to a preacher who's who said you know he said uh, he had this small time preacher small church praying for revival, God to use him, nothing happening. And September 9-11, he happened to fly into US. And that's the day those twin towers fell. And he was in Texas. And he flew in. And just after that, immediately this thing happened. This tragic thing happened. And uh, 
he came there to visit one of his friends who was a pastor and he was there with the man of god the man had invited him so he was there but td jakes was holding a meeting a conference and because this thing happened all the flights got cancelled there was nobody to preach for td jakes in that conference that day the particular preacher who was supposed to come couldn't come so this pastor who's who, with whom he was staying was a good friend of td jakes and he said uh, td jakes called him and said you know my guest preacher was supposed to come here for the conference he can't make it he said i have a preacher here Okay, he is let him come in and preach. Small time country boy, he goes in. He says his knees were shaking. He didn't know what to expect what to do. He's never been in front of a camera. He's never been such a huge conference. He's never been he went in there trembling and God gave him a scripture on the way and he just went there. He had a lot of messages he had prepared but he thought he will go by what God put into his heart. He opened that scripture and he was trembling literally ah oh, knees were shaking and that moment that split second moment the glory just came down he says he does not know what he preached revelation came out <laughs> prophecies came out the anointing just began to move people were falling all over uh, people were running forward throwing in money i mean his ministry took off from there but the moment and i believe our church is going to enter into that moment Amen. some of you sitting here are going to enter into your moments whether it be business ministry your life uh, you are coming to that s c h i e z o moment uh, in the holy ghost uh, when you come in that secret place with your worship and offering unto god uh, with all those deep experiences and your hallelujah as rise before god in worship uh, something will happen lo open your mouth and say, something is going to happen uh, god is going to do uh, in a sp- Split second, that which I've been trying to achieve all through my life. In a split second, God will do for you. In the name of Jesus, Amen. 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 Lift your hands to Him tonight. Lift your hands to Him tonight. Lift your hands to Him tonight. Tonight, I'm not speaking about whether you're sitting in front of a TV, but the posture of your heart. the posture of your life will you stand up or kneel down wherever you are and give your life to jesus and say lord if my heart has been arrogant and proud and self-centered and been just looking at myself and not at you i'm sorry lord i humble myself i want to come before your mercy your plenteous in mercy lord i just want to come before you i want you to illuminate me i want you to give me a revelation i want you to give me a rest i want to come into that place where i can have intimacy with you i do not just want to come into a church and just go and not just want to listen to a message and go i want to have the deep moments with you lord the deep moments with you uh, the intimate moments with you lord uh, here i am jesus would you do that would you would you stand up in the presence of god or kneel down in the presence of god lift your hands to jesus and open your mouth and call on the name of jesus call on the name of jesus jesus we, jesus, we call on your name hallelujah thank you jesus 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 jesus, 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 jesus son of david have mercy jesus, call on his name thank you. call on his name thank you. jesus thank jesus, you. jesus 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 you, let your praise thank rise you, do not be ashamed of the name of jesus hallelujah. let your jesus. voice rise let your incense oh, rise you come on church the, begin to smoke wherever like you like are you let you your incense your praise your prayer rise before god rahala ba shahala ba ra ba rahala ba la ba shwa dhana vi ba la ba shwa ba hallelujah hallelujah skill boss wa jhadura ba la ba thank you lord thank you jesus praise you father glorify your name thank you lord in presence of a holy god there's you Amen. 
majestic is your name I am changed in the presence of the Holy God I am changed in the presence of the Holy God Will you worship together with us? The presence of the Holy God is you breathing down to the grace. You took all my sin upon yourself. I can only stand amazed. Yes, and I cry, Holy. I holy, holy, holy God, how majestic is your name. I am changed in the presence of your holy God. I am changed in the presence of my I cry holy, holy, holy. And I cry holy, holy, holy God. How awesome is your name. I cry holy, holy, holy God. How majestic is your name. I am changed in the presence of the Holy God, and I am changed in the presence of the Holy God, and I am changed in the presence. Lord Jesus, I surrender my heart to you. I surrender my heart. I give my life to you. I give my life to you. Forgive me for my pride. Forgive me for my pride. for my self righteousness. For my self righteousness. For my arrogance. For my arrogance. I humble myself before I you, Lord. Humble myself before you, Lord. Take not your presence from me. Take not your presence from me. Help me to dwell in your presence, Lord. To dwell in your presence. Lord. Help me to have access to your secret place, Help God. Help me to have access to your secret. Place. Help me to abide there, Lord. Help me to abide. There. Lord Jesus, humble myself before you. Humble myself. Before Forgive me for all my sins. For all my sins. Cleanse me deep within, Lord. Cleanse me deep. Forgive all my sins. Forgive all my sins. Wash me with your precious Wash blood. Me with your precious Cleanse me, Lord. Cleanse me. Deliver me, Lord. Have mercy on me, Lord. Have mercy on me. I surrender my life to you. I surrender my life. I give my life to I you, Jesus. My life to you. I proclaim you. Proclaim you as my Lord and as Savior. My Lord and Savior. Jesus, Christ, Jesus Christ, you are my Lord and you Savior. Are my Lord and you are my Master. You are my Master. I surrender to you. I surrender. To I submit to you. I submit to you. Reveal yourself to me, Lord. Reveal yourself to me. I give myself to I you. I give myself to you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You alone can revive you me. Alone can revive you alone can restore me. You alone can restore me. You alone can build me. You alone can, you alone can help me. You alone can, you alone can save me. You alone I call on your name, Jesus. I, call on your name, I renounce Jesus. Satan. I renounce, I renounce sin. sin. I, renounce I renounce the world. I renounce the Jesus world. is my Lord. Jesus is my Thank Lord. You, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And I cry, Holy, 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 Holy God. How awesome is your name. And I cry, Holy, Holy, holy God, how majestic is your name. And I am changed in the presence of a holy God. And I am changed 
in the presence of your Lord. As we take the bread in our hands tonight, let us remember that Jesus gave himself for us to justify us before the Father. He became sin that we might become his righteousness. He became a curse that we might walk under a blessing. He underwent our judgment that we might walk in his grace and in his mercy. We might walk in forgiveness and acceptance. We have peace with God through his blood. We are reconciled to the Father through the sacrifice of Jesus. We are perfected before God through the blood of Jesus. There is no other sacrifice that is there or that will ever be there that can reconcile us back to the Father but the sacrifice of Jesus. Tonight we lay our lives at his feet. We say, Jesus, I love you. You are a holy God. You are a holy God. You alone can transform and change me. You are the bread of life. I lay my life before you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Bless this bread, O oh God, and bless our lives. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you. That the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. This do ye, as often as you eat this, in remembrance of me. Amen. Let's partake of this bread together. Amen. Let us remember the blood of Jesus Christ that washes us and makes us whiter than snow. We are hid, we are protected, we are sanctified, justified through his blood. May the blood of Jesus speak over us a better word than the blood of Abel. After the same manner also he took the cup when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as often as you drink it. In remembrance of me let's thank Jesus for his precious blood the cup of blessing the cup of joy the cup of forgiveness the cup that reconciles us back to God thank you Jesus thank you Jesus, thank you, Jesus. may your blood speak over us a better yes. word than the blood of evil thank you, thank you, Lord. Thank you Lord in Jesus name amen For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death till he comes. Jesus will come again. May we be hid in his presence Thank you. until the coming of the Lord when we are caught up to be with him. I hope this word is a blessing as we continue to worship him with the song that we were singing just now. Lift your hearts before him. Can you to lift up his name? And just offer him your heart. Let his transforming love, his presence, his grace come upon you. May you find the secret place. May you find that spot in God that we have access to through the blood of Jesus. It is personal. Amen. Whoever, come to his presence. Let him transform you, change you. He's a holy God. Thank you. Cry, holy, holy, holy God, how awesome is your name. We cry, holy, holy, holy God, how majestic is your name. I am changed in the presence of a holy God. In the presence of a holy God. As you meeting down to us, you do all my sins upon And I cry, holy, 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 
cry holy 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 god how majestic is your name i am changed in the presence of a holy god and i am changed May there be an open heaven over your children. Yes. May they worship rise up as incense before you. Yes. May they find your mercy and enjoy your mercy. May your grace abound upon them. I commit your congregation into your hands tonight. Your word declares you will build your church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against you. Build your church, O oh Lord. Build your people, O oh God. Build our lives, O oh God. Yes. Let not the gates of hell ever prevail against us. We come at your congregation of people into your hands and we bless them. Yes. Bless them in the name of the Father, Amen. in the name of the Lord Jesus, yes. in the name of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Good night. Remember, Jesus Christ is our Lord. Amen. God bless you.